Can you imagine a boy, acclaimed as the immortal son of Zeus, who led his armies on a horse that was afraid of its own shadow? What if I told you this same boy became a young general and managed to conquer the entire known world? Picture a king, undefeated in major battles, commanding his forces through 11 years of relentless campaigning. Now, think about the enduring legacy of this remarkable figure. How has his influence lasted from heart of Macedonia to the remote valleys of Hindu Kush mountains? Ever heard about a salt mine in Pakistan being discovered because of a horse? How did this man not only conquer vast territories but also profoundly transform the cultures and religions of those regions? To know how did he claim the title of King of Asia, not through conquest, but by unraveling the mystery of a knot tied to an ancient cart, stay with us till the end of this video. This is Rapid Rewinds, and today we bring you the remarkable tale of Alexander the Great. In the royal palace of Pella, Macedonia, on July 20, 356 BC, a prince named Alexander was born to King Philip II and Queen Olympias, marking a momentous day in history. Legends tell of the Temple of Artemis at Ephesus burning down on the night of his birth, a sign interpreted as the arrival of a world-changing force. Astrologers, observing auspicious celestial alignments, predicted a destiny of greatness and power for him. Adding to the mystique, a dream by Olympias of a thunderbolt striking her womb was seen as a divine sign, leading to the belief that Alexander was the son of Zeus, destined for unparalleled achievements. Raised in Macedonia's royal court, Alexander was deeply influenced by his father, King Philip II's military prowess, and his mother, Queen Olympias's intelligence and will. His early life involved exposure to military and political affairs, shaping his understanding of leadership and warfare. Alexander's education encompassed Greek learning and skills like horseback riding and hunting, fitting for a Macedonian noble. Notable in his youth was his remarkable feat of taming the horse Bucephalus, showcasing early signs of his leadership and courage. From the ages of 13 to 16, Alexander was immersed in the teachings of Aristotle, one of the greatest intellectual figures of Western history. Under Aristotle's guidance, he developed a keen interest in philosophy, medicine, and scientific investigation, shaping his mind for the challenges ahead. During these formative years, Alexander's military prowess began to surface. In 340 BC, at just 16 years old, Alexander was given the significant responsibility of governing Macedonia while his father, King Philip II, was on military campaign against Byzantium. Demonstrating a maturity and strategic insight well beyond his years, Alexander effectively managed the kingdom, skillfully addressing internal challenges and local threats. At 18, Alexander's military talents were prominently displayed during the Battle of Kyrenia in 338 BC. This battle was a result of his father, King Philip II's ambition to unite all of Greece under Macedonian rule, an objective that faced strong opposition from various Greek city-states. The resistance culminated in a significant conflict with the Sacred Band of Thebes, an elite military unit. In this crucial battle, Alexander led a bold cavalry charge against the Sacred Band, playing a key role in securing a Macedonian victory. This decisive action not only demonstrated his bravery and tactical skill, but also marked his rise as a formidable leader and strategist on the battlefield. In 336 BC, a pivotal moment reshaped the course of Alexander's life. At the young age of 20, he faced a dramatic turn of events when his father, King Philip II, was assassinated by a royal bodyguard, entangled in a web of personal vendettas and political scheming. This shocking event thrust Alexander onto the throne. In the ensuing chaos, he swiftly and decisively seized control, eliminating any rivals and suppressing rebellions. His actions in these turbulent times showcased a blend of ruthless efficiency and charismatic leadership. In 335 BC, following his ascension to the Macedonian throne, Alexander the Great faced a rebellion from the city of Thebes, one of the major Greek city-states. Believing Alexander to be dead, Thebes challenged his authority, leading Alexander to swiftly besiege and capture the city. The siege was marked by its intensity and brutality. Thebes was sacked. Its inhabitants were either killed or sold into slavery, 
and the city was largely destroyed, except for its temples in the house of the poet Pindar. This decisive and harsh action served as a stark warning to other Greek states about the consequences of opposing Alexander, solidifying his control over Greece and setting the stage for his future conquests. With his authority firmly established, the Greek states, recognizing his power, agreed to supply troops for his planned war against Persia. In 333 BC, during his ambitious campaign against the Persian Empire, Alexander first made a strategic move by crossing the Dardanelles into Persia. His initial confrontation with King Darius III occurred at the Battle of the Granicus River, where he achieved a significant victory. This success laid the groundwork for his conquest of western Persia. Understanding the importance of maritime strategy, Alexander then turned south with a clear objective, to deny the Persian fleet access to ports along the coast. In a bold decision reflecting his confidence in his army's capabilities, he disbanded his own navy, choosing instead to focus on a land-based military campaign. This strategy led to the pivotal Battle of Issus later that year. At Issus, Alexander once again faced King Darius III. Despite being outnumbered, Alexander's tactical brilliance shone through. He employed innovative strategies and leveraged the strengths of his well-trained army, leading to a staggering victory. The battle ended with Darius III fleeing the field, leaving his family at Alexander's mercy. This victory at Issus was not just a testament to Alexander's military genius, but also a crucial turning point in his campaign, as it significantly weakened Persian resistance and morale. Following this victory, Alexander's journey led him to Gordium, where he encountered the legendary Gordian knot. This intricate knot, tied to an ancient cart, was associated with a prophecy that whoever unraveled it would rule all of Asia. Unlike those who had attempted and failed to untie it, Alexander simply drew his sword and sliced through the knot, a bold act that symbolized his approach to overcoming challenges and was seen as fulfilling the prophecy, further cementing his destiny as the ruler of Asia. This decisive action at Gordium, following his success at Issus, solidified Alexander's reputation as a formidable and innovative commander, paving the way for his continued conquests into the heart of the Persian Empire. In 332 BC, Alexander's conquest took a significant turn as he entered Egypt, a land rich in ancient traditions. Welcomed as a liberator rather than a conqueror, Alexander quickly left his mark by founding the city of Alexandria, envisioned as a hub of culture and learning. Alexandria was strategically located on the Mediterranean coast of Egypt, serving as a major port and trade hub. Its establishment was part of Alexander's vision to merge Greek and Egyptian cultures, thereby strengthening his empire's control over the region and the Mediterranean Sea. Quickly growing into a major economic center, Alexandria became renowned for its wealth, magnificent architecture, including the famous Lighthouse of Alexandria, and as a hub of learning and scholarship. Housing the legendary Library of Alexandria. This made it not only a political and economic powerhouse, but also a center of Hellenistic culture and intellectual life, cementing its status as one of the ancient world's most important cities. His journey reached a mystical peak at the Oracle of Siwa, where he was proclaimed the son of Zeus, elevating him to a god-king status. This moment not only solidified his divine stature among his followers, but also cemented his influence in Egypt, intertwining his legacy with the divine and amplifying his historical significance. The year 331 BC was a defining moment of Alexander's military career, where he once again turned his sight and marched towards the Persian Empire, this time with one goal, to conquer it all. Alexander triumphed over Darius at the Battle of Gogamela. This battle was a critical clash between Alexander of Macedonia and King Darius III of Persia, driven by Alexander's ambition to conquer the Persian Empire and avenge previous Persian invasions of Greece. Darius III aimed to defend his empire and chose the battlefield for its advantageous terrain. This battle was a strategic necessity for Alexander to break Persian power and control key regions like Babylon, 
while for Darius, it was a crucial stand to preserve Persian sovereignty. The battle represented the peak of Alexander's Persian campaign and was decisive in dismantling the Persian Empire's dominance, significantly expanding Alexander's empire. After his victory at the Battle of Gogamila, Alexander peacefully entered Babylon, a key cultural and economic center of the ancient world. The Babylonians, discontent with Persian rule under Darius III, welcomed Alexander as a liberator, granting him access to the city. His entry was both triumphant and respectful. He honored local customs and religious practices, which helped him gain the support of the Babylonian people. Alexander's approach to Babylon was strategic, as he aimed to use the city as an administrative base for his expanding empire, symbolizing the shift in power and culture brought about by his conquests. Following the death of Darius, Alexander declared himself king of Asia, marking a significant expansion of his empire. He consolidated his rule in Persia, using its wealth to support his ongoing expeditions, which played a crucial role in spreading Hellenistic culture across the conquered territories. His campaigns were accompanied by a diverse group of experts, including surveyors, engineers, architects, and scholars, facilitating not just military conquests but also cultural and intellectual integration. Embracing Persian customs and dress, Alexander sought to blend Macedonian and Persian cultures, symbolizing his vision of a unified and diverse empire under his rule. In the midst of these tumultuous campaigns, Alexander's life took a personal turn. He married Ruxana, a Bactrian noblewoman, a union that was more than a mere alliance. It was a symbol of his deepening ties with the lands and cultures he sought to bring under his sway. In his relentless pursuit of expansion, Alexander turned his gaze to the rich and mysterious lands of India. This campaign, which began around 327 BC, was driven by his ambition to expand his empire and achieve world domination. Alexander entered India through the northwestern frontier via the Great Khyber Pass, which is now part of modern-day Pakistan. He crossed the Hindu Kush mountains and moved into the Punjab region of Taxila and Gandhara. His army faced challenging terrain and harsh conditions, including difficult mountain passes and unfamiliar climates. His invasion brought him into conflict with several local rulers, each encounter adding to his legend. In 326 BC, the climax of his Indian campaign was the epic battle against Rajapuris at the Hydasps River in the Punjab region, famously known as the Battle of Elephants. Despite facing formidable war elephants and a tough opponent, Alexander emerged victorious, demonstrating his exceptional tactical skills. This battle earned him respect for his gracious treatment of Porus afterwards. Post-victory, Alexander advanced eastward to the Bias River, but his troops, exhausted and wary of further combat against the Nanda Empire in the Ganges Valley, expressed a strong desire to return home. Reluctantly, Alexander was forced to heed their wishes and turn back, a decision that weighed heavily on his ambitions. The return journey was marred by the disastrous march through the Jidrosha Desert, a decision that led to immense suffering and the loss of many lives. This harrowing experience through the harsh, unforgiving desert terrain tested the limits of Alexander's army, taking a severe toll on both men and animals. The Gedrosian March stands as a grim reminder of the harsh realities of ancient warfare and the human cost of Alexander's unquenchable thirst for conquest. Upon his return to Susa, the administrative heart of the Persian Empire, Alexander the Great orchestrated a significant and symbolic event, a mass marriage ceremony. This grand union between his Macedonian soldiers and Persian women was more than a mere celebration. It was a strategic endeavor to fuse Greek and Persian cultures, and to legitimize his rule over the Persian Empire. He himself married Statira II, the eldest daughter of Darius III of Persia, and Perisida II, the daughter of Artaxerxes III. In addition to these nuptials, Alexander honored his battle-weary veterans, sending them home laden with prizes and honors, a gesture of gratitude for their service. Even as he celebrated this cultural amalgamation, Alexander's mind was already charting plans for further expeditions, his ambition and thirst for conquest undimmed by the challenges he had faced. Following these events, Alexander set his sights on new conquests, including an ambitious plan to invade Arabia. However, destiny had other intentions, and the world was soon to witness the end of an era with the loss of one of its most legendary figures.
In 323 BC, the grand saga of Alexander the Great reached its sudden and mysterious conclusion in the majestic palace of Babylon. He died on June 10, 323 BC, at the young age of 32. The circumstances of his death remain shrouded in mystery. Some believe he fell ill, while others speculate he was poisoned. His enigmatic last words, to the strongest, sparked a fierce power struggle among his generals, foreshadowing the eventual fragmentation of his vast empire. Intriguing tales surround his death, including the story that his body was placed in a special coffin filled with honey, in an attempt to preserve it and symbolize the futile effort to immortalize a man who had already become a legend. According to legend, as Alexander the Great near death, he made a profound request, bury my body and don't build any monument. Keep my hands out so the people know the one who won the world had nothing in hand when he died. This symbolic act of leaving his hands outside his coffin was meant to illustrate that, despite his immense wealth and power, he departed the world empty-handed. Underscoring the universality of mortality and perhaps acknowledging his unfulfilled ambitions, it was a humble reminder of the limits of power and wealth in the face of death, though the historical accuracy of this quote and story is uncertain. After Alexander's death, his vast empire, left without a clear heir, was divided among his powerful generals. This division marked the onset of the Hellenistic period, characterized by a remarkable blend of Greek culture with the diverse traditions of Egypt, the Middle East, and beyond. This era saw a significant cultural fusion, spreading Greek influence across the known world and giving rise to a vibrant, diverse landscape of Greek theaters, governance, and lifestyle in distant lands. Alexander's influence extended far beyond his lifetime and empire. In Taxila, Pakistan, archaeologists discovered a Buddhist monastery with Buddha sculptures, one style of which bore Greek artistic features, showcasing Alexander's impact on local culture and religion. The Kalash Valley people are believed to be descendants of Greek soldiers from Alexander's army, their distinct physical features setting them apart from neighboring regions. Additionally, the Kira salt mines, one of the world's oldest and largest, were discovered by Alexander's forces when his horse, ill and licking salt-rich stones. Led to the uncovering of this vast natural resource in the Kalar Kahar region near the Jhelum River. These instances are a testament to Alexander's enduring legacy, a legacy which reshaped the entire ancient world. This is Rapid Rewind signing off. Remember, legends never fade, they just get retold. Stay tuned for the next one.